So whether you're watching this video to learn how to initially install your very first virtual machine within Hyper-V or using it as part of my series, installing an Active Directory test domain in Hyper-V, the important thing is to understand that there was some pre-configuration things that we did in a previous video. And that is that we went in and created a virtual switch here, our vSwitch external, that we can apply to the virtual machine so that it can connect out to the internet through my host machine. And then also, I like the best practice of going in and changing where the virtual hard disks and virtual machines are located. So I put those in my documents in virtual machines in VHD. I'm the only one that uses this computer. I'm the only one that's going to need access to these. So again, this is not a production setup here. It's a lab setup on your local machine. So we're ready to start the install of our first virtual machine. Now I'm going to go new and virtual machine, and I'm going to walk through the new virtual machine wizard. I'll choose next. Now I need to give this machine a name. I always like to start with the actual computer name that I'm going to use. In this case, as I said, I am going to make this part of an Active Directory infrastructure. So this is gonna be an MIIM DSK0001, so I can have up to 9,999 virtual desktops if I wanted to, dash, and then I'm just gonna put that it's gonna be Win10 Pro, so that I have in the name, what OS. I'm gonna choose next. I'm gonna choose a generation two so I can gain some of the latest features. It is a 64-bit operating system, big hard drives if I wanted, virtual drives, whatever. So I'll choose next. Now, I'm going to give it two gigs of memory and I'm gonna turn off the dynamic memory. What dynamic memory does is it only allocates as much memory as the virtual machine needs at that moment to operate. Thus, it's not going to take an actual two gigs from my physical machine. My physical machine has 16 gigs of RAM and assign it. But in this case, I've got 16 gigs of RAM. I'm gonna go ahead and each time I fire up this machine, allocate a dedicated two gigs to this virtual machine. If you wanted to run, if you're limited, you've got eight gigs of memory and you want to run more virtual machines than you have memory, use the dynamic memory for virtual machines. Just be careful to monitor the memory so that you don't, of course, run out and crash. I'll choose next. This is the network adapter. I created that virtual switch, so I'm going to assign it, bind it to this machine. Now, if you notice, here is the virtual hard disk. I don't need 127 gigs, maybe a 60 gig. They are dynamically expanding, so not a big deal. It's not going to dedicate 60 gigs of hard disk space to this virtual machine. I'll choose next. Install an operating system. I'm going to do that now, and what I've done is down here, I'm just going to browse out to a little... Like I said, I'm going to browse out, it wasn't connected, to a little external solid state I have, software installation files, Windows 10, and find the ISO that I want to use for my installation, which is right here. So I'll click, I'll choose Next. It gives me a summary of my virtual machine, and I'll choose Finish. Now at this point, it's going to go ahead and create the disk and create the machine. I have yet to fire up this machine. You see that its state is off. I'm going to click on it choose connect. At this point, it's going to open up a little window here. Let me bring it over for the virtual machine, and I'm going to start the virtual machine. Now, when I do that, I got to catch it quickly and hit, just like you would on a physical machine, hit to install from the CD or DVD. So it's gone ahead and virtualized a CD DVD. It thinks the ISO is in there and I'm ready to install just like I would on a physical machine. Here, I'm gonna choose next. I'm gonna install now. Now, as it does this, it's gonna ask me for a key. We'll see that in just a minute. And what I'm gonna do is pause the video, enter the key. So I'm gonna enter my key here and then choose next, taking me to the screen. So you'll need to enter your key. Let me pause while I do that so I don't show you my key. Now, once it accepts my key, then I just accept the license terms, choose next. And I'm going to do a custom install onto that virtual hard disk that I created, which is right there. So it's highlighted. I'll choose next. 
And at this point, it's going to copy the Windows files over from my external solid state, get the files ready, install, etc. So I'll pause while it does some of this work. So once it completes the install, it'll go ahead and reboot the machine just like it would in a physical environment. So I'll go ahead and pause while it continues to reboot. Once it reboots, it's going to ask me what kind of settings I want. I'm going to just simply use the express settings and it will walk through the completing, I should say, the installation of Windows 10. So I'll pause again. As you can see, it'll go ahead, it'll grab the critical updates because it's able to get out to the internet via that external switch and it'll continue the install. So it's gonna go ahead and reboot one more time. Now in my installation, it's asking me about what kind of user account that I wanna create. Join an Azure Active Directory, join local Active Directory domain. In this case, I'm gonna join a local directory. We're gonna create a local account so that I can go in and instantiate this computer. In this case, I'm gonna just put a little admin account in here, the MIIM admin. I'll give it a nice complex password, uppercase, lowercase, numerals, all the good stuff. Test environment, I don't need a password hint, but if you wanted to, you could put one in. I'll choose next. Okay, it's gonna require a hint. All right, I'll just say regular lab password and choose next. And it'll go ahead and instantiate my local user account for the MIIM admin. So I'll pause while it does that. So as you can see, it's going and configuring, doing a little work, setting up that MIIM admin account. Here I am, it's logged into the system. It's going to connect via that active network. So I'll say yes, connect to that network and we're up and running. So that's it for installing our first virtual machine within Hyper-V.